Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome everyone once again to our Facebook page. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, Deb goes in mo early Monday morning for her surgery, and we want to thank everyone for your continuing prayers on her behalf. Uh, we have to be in Boardman, uh, where she's going to have the operation at 5.30 in the morning, which means we'll have to leave here at 4.30. Uh, so please keep her in your prayers. Uh, Keith Chopik just recently had a birthday. Uh, great brother in Christ and friend. And uh, on a, another note, uh, want to thank all those who've continued to give, even though we're not meeting we're, that we still have obligations that we have to uh, look up to. Uh, I was talking with Roseanne and Brian, and uh, our building loan is now down below $4,000. So we're very close to paying that off and being free of all debt. So please keep up your giving. Um, uh, first off, I want to thank everyone for being attentive to Rob and I as we were filling in for Terry in his absence. Our goal has been to do our best in keeping us all faithful in our walk with the Lord. One of the benefits of filling in for Terry has been the time and effort that I've spent in God's Word preparing for these sermons, and I'm sure Rob has as well. I'm thankful that this has caused me to spend more time than usual in God's word. Terry will be back in the pulpit next week and we'll be back to worshiping at the building next week. At 10 o'clock, uh, everything will start and the building will be ready. Uh, please wear your mask and uh, keep your distance and all that kind of, we still have to do that, but at least we're gonna be able to meet and as things develop, we'll look at the Sunday evening and Wednesdays when we can start those once again. You know, it's been a long, hard year for everyone adjusting to the changes forced on us by this pandemic. Some have had an especially difficult year with the loss of loved ones. So we must keep them in our prayers and look for ways that we can aid them in their, in their grief uh, which brings me to a verse that pops out at me as we go through these times. That, that's in Hebrews 10, verses 23 through 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day draw near. So I pray that none of us have developed a habit of not assembling together since we have had to cancel services for so long. So let us all make every effort to once again do as the Lord requires and begin our meeting this coming Sunday together in fellowship where we can sing praises of song and hear Terry's sermons once again. The Lord knows full well how we are. He knows our every weakness. He knows that if we fail to assemble, we run the risk of falling away from his grace. Every word of scripture is there for our benefit. Therefore, let us take heed to God's word as given in Hebrews to assemble for worship and fellowship. With that said, let's get into this morning's lesson. This lesson will have its base in the book of John, specifically John 15 verses five through eight, even though we'll cover others. So let's read together these verses. The book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John chapter 15 verses one through 11. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in a vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me 
and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love, Jesus says. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy be in you, and that your joy may be, may be made full. So we're going to concentrate on verses 5 through 8 for the most part. Jesus has been pairing, preparing his disciples for his soon death, burial, and resurrection. He is giving them and us instructions for living the Christian life and staying strong in our faith. Earlier in John chapter 14 and verse 6, at the Last Supper, Jesus warned his apostles about his coming arrest and death. The apostles couldn't understand what he meant. Finally, Thomas explained, We do not know where you are going, Jesus. How can we possibly know the way? Jesus took this opportunity to teach them. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Back to John 15. We find it clear that Jesus used everyday events as a springboard, springboard for teaching eternal truths. He used relatable events, relatable things, and life experiences to bring out a deeper meaning, a deeper understanding as well as we, as we peel back his words, what he's really saying here. Here, here in John, was, he was setting an example of what all of us, all of us are called to do. Not only those apostles that he was speaking to there, he's speaking to all of us. In the Old Testament, Moses told the Israelites how they were to pass God's truths along to each new generation. He said, Moses, teach them your, to your children talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. That's in Deuteronomy eleven nineteen. If the only time you spend on God's word is one hour on Sunday morning, you'll never grow in the faith or discover the fullness of life that is offered by our God through his grace. We need to be ready for teachable moments. That comes while we're going about our daily lives. When we're sitting down for breakfast, walking, or most of us today while driving our kids around, or in some cases our parents, all these daily events provide opportunities to teach about God and to learn about him as well. Not only to others, but to ourselves. That's the way Jesus taught. He was always alert to teachable moments when he could tie eternal truths together with events of the moment. In our verses for this morning, we see that Jesus was using a word picture that was very familiar to his disciples. For one thing, grapes were central to Israel's economy. The climate in Israel was perfect for growing and cultivating grapes. For another thing, the grapevine had always been the symbol of the nation of Israel. In fact, the symbol of the grapevine was on Israel's coins up until the time they were conquered by Rome. Even the entrance to the temple was adorned with, <coughs> excuse me, adorned with a gold wire and beads 
delicately twisted together to look like a huge grapevine. As you come into the entrance, you would see that. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man abides in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's verse 5. There's a word that flows through our scripture this morning that's repeated several times. That word is abide. The word abide is used 11 times in 11 verses. We can see that abiding is necessary to produce fruit. We can also see that not abiding means the branch is useless. Therefore, what does it mean to abide in Christ? Jesus gave a little more understanding when he said this, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. That's verse seven. So please don't miss this point. To abide in Christ means to spend time focusing on him and his words. In practical terms, it means we spend time reading, studying, and meditating on his words. When God's word abides in us, we abide in Christ. We know that some in Christendom demand that God alone is the active one when it comes to salvation. Some believe that we do not have a part in our salvation. Although it's true that salvation comes by God through Jesus the Christ, that, is the, that it is only through the grace of God that we can be saved, the emphasis here in John 15 pictures a vine and the branches in partnership. The vine and the branches in the partnership with God through connection to Jesus. Allow me to interject here what one evangelist said. Uh, a gentleman by the name of George Whitefield conducted an outdoor Bible campaign way back in the 1700s during a period of revival that was called the Great Awakening. Thousands responded to the gospel message he gave. After one of his sermons, someone asked Whitefield how many people were converted. He replied, we'll know in five years. In other words, the passing of time would show which decisions were superficial and which were genuine. Some would abide, others would not. We're told to abide because it is something that we can do but it is also something that we do not have to do in our own reasoning. But abiding is something we can do and we certainly must do. We can abide by the Lord's commands or not. In practical terms, we have a daily choice to make. Will we spend time in prayer? Will we spend time with other believers? If we fail to see that abiding is our job, we miss not only the point of this morning's sermon, but the point of Jesus' words that we're reading out of uh, chapter 15. There is no exception. If we fail to abide, we will be left in a dangerous state. Jesus gives us reassuring promises for those who stay connected but chilling warnings for those who turn loose from the vine, turn away from Jesus. The unfruitful branch is taken away. We read that in verse two. A branch cannot bear fruit and in fact can do absolutely nothing apart from the vine. Verse four and five. In the end, the one who does not abide is thrown away, cast into the fire, and we're told burn at verse 6. If we do not abide in Christ, the consequences are terrible. But when we abide in Christ, we will have a wonderful outcome. 
It's called fruit bearing. The purpose of the branch is to bear fruit. Fruit bearing doesn't require that much effort on our part. Fruit is a natural result of abiding in the branch, in the, in the vine. Fruit produced off a branch is just natural when it's attached to the vine. While fruit comes from abiding, a good harvest does require effort on the part of the vine dresser. Jesus said, I am the vine and my father is the gardener or vine dresser. John 15, 1. We read that the vine provides life and the vine dresser provides what is needed for a good harvest. This passage that we've been concentrating on lets us know that we are branches connected to vine. In other words, we are connected to Jesus as long as we abide in him. Moving a little further down in John 15, verses 14 and 15, Jesus said to his disciples, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for a slave does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friend. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. What can we take from the verses that we've covered so far? Two actions that are required from us. One, as branches, we are to abide. And two, as friends, we are to obey. Abide and obey. We also discover in these two verses of 14 and 15, a new understanding of our connection with Christ. Vines and branches have a biological connection in which the vine does all the giving and the branches do all the receiving. However, friendship adds to this understanding. Friendship is personal. Friendship is reciprocal. Unlike a slave who has no options to obey or not, obeying Christ and as friend is a matter of choice. Friends care what is important to their friends. Jesus wants to share his plans with his friends. He wants them not only to abide, but to obey. He wants them to carry forward with his plans. He's not only speaking to those first century disciples, <coughs> excuse me, he's not only speaking in first century disciples, he's speaking to us as well. Jesus letting, is letting them know and us know that we are to share in his ministry. What does it mean to abide and obey? Someone put it this way. Each one helps out the other. The one who abides finds it easier to obey. And the obedient one is more comfortable abiding. On the other hand, the one who fails to ab abide is more likely to disobey. And the one who disobeys doesn't feel comfortable abiding. I know this statement's not easy to grasp when you just hear it. So I suggest that uh, after Rob posts my sermon notes on our website that you go there and kind of look that over. You can, you can mull that over and consider what he's saying there. All of us know of some that are not with us anymore because they just drifted away. They just fell off the vine. They never really plugged into the church or to fellowship. The real sadness was that during the time we had to advise them, they were not abiding with the Lord or us. Because they stopped abiding, they longer, no longer wanted to obey. It kind of falls into that statement I just read. The, the branch not receiving nourishment from the vine shrivels up and falls off the vine. And so it is with us. If we fail to stay connected to the vine, Jesus, 
we will not receive any nourishment. And what do you think the outcome's gonna be? It's pretty obvious. On the other hand, the happiest person in the world is the Christian who is abiding and obeying. Jesus explained this when he said these words. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. That's in verse 11 of our chapter we're reading 15. Let me say those words again that Jesus said. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be made full. So there's a key to a full life of joy, abiding and obeying in Jesus' words, fully attached to him, receiving his nourishment through his words, and we will have a joyful life even in the midst of hard times. What can we learn from the statement from Jesus? The outcome for the obedient abider is joy and a full life. In wrapping this lesson up, this was the final I am statement of Jesus to his disciples the night before he was arrested and we learned two very important truths. He gives in these few verses that we covered this morning both a promise and a command. As the vine, Jesus provides all the nourishment we will ever need in life. Trust in him, not ourselves. As the vine dresser, God does all that is needed to give us fruitful lives. As the branches, our part is to abide and obey. If we abide in his love, we can experience his joy to the full. If we obey him, we are his friends and share in his life and his ministry. So how would you describe your connection with Christ this morning? Jesus is the vine, the, the sustainer of life itself. Is he your vine? Is he what you attach yourself to? Are you receiving the nourishment to become a fruitful branch? Do you want to be? In Matthew 11, 28 and 30, the vine, Jesus, says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my load is light. He's saying, come unto me. Be grafted into the vine. Won't you take this opportunity this morning, won't all of us, to abide and obey what the Father through Jesus freely offers? Is that not the grace of God? Join all branches that are connected to Jesus and the vine. All those who have been baptized into Christ are grafted into the vine. Please ask us to assist you in that grafting. To those of us who have already accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, take some, some time and meditate on your life as a branch of Jesus with him being the vine. Maybe you need to do some pruning so that you can become a more useful branch, a fruit producing branch in the Lord's kingdom. I want to again thank the Lord and you for the opportunity to cover for Terry during his absence. And I'm excited that uh, him and Jeannie are coming back. I can't wait to hear all their story about what they experienced down there. And I'm looking forward to Terry's first sermon next Sunday. So I pray that the lessons that Rob and I have presented were fruitful for all and that they help, help us in some way to grow because we're just trying to express God's word so that we can actually use it and apply it to our lives. So have a good day and may the Lord bless.